Hello everyone, welcome back to Thriller Recap. Today I will show you an action, crime film from 2016, titled Triple Nine. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a man named Michael Atwood who is planning a robbery with his cop brother Gabe and his friend Russell Welch. They are ordered to rob a bank and take the safe. The box contains information that can invalidate a guilty verdict against a Russian crime lord who was recently imprisoned for a series of crimes he committed. Because their job this time is quite difficult, Michael decides to recruit two other crew members, namely two corrupt cops, Marcus Belmont and Franco Rodriguez, where Michael promises his crew a big reward if they are willing to do the job. Long story short, Michael and his crew are preparing to carry out the robbery. On the other hand, there is a cold-faced woman who does not hesitate to kill those who dare to betray her in a very brutal way. Namely, Irina Vlaslav, the crime boss's wife, employs Michael and his crew. The scene then switches and shows a police detective named Chris Allen, who is preparing to carry out his duties. Before work, Chris said goodbye to his wife, Michelle, and their little son. Switch back to Michael and his crew. They are now preparing to break into the bank they are targeting by wearing masks and being fully armed. While Michael and the rest of the crew knock out all the security guards, Russell stands guard in the car, keeping an eye on the situation outside the bank and monitoring the movements of the cops who might be there within minutes of sounding the alarm. Michael then threatened one of the bank managers to open the locker of the safe box they were after, and then took the items in it along with the safe box. On the other hand, Gabe seems to have put a bundle of money in the bag he was carrying, even though stealing money from the bank was not part of their plan. After finding the item they were after, Michael and his crew rushed out of the bank, detonating a grenade at the entrance, before escaping from there. On the way, the money Gabe put in his bag suddenly emitted red smoke, which filled their car, causing the driver to lose control of the steering wheel and have to stop the car in heavy traffic. Not running out of ideas, Michael and his crew then made a commotion in the middle of the road by opening fire in all directions and stealing other cars to escape from there. The car they had previously used was then blown up to eliminate the traces. Stand down. After finally escaping the police and finding a safe hiding place, they blamed each other for what had happened. Franco and Marcus clash with Gabe and blame him for stealing money that wasn't supposed to be taken because it wasn't part of the plan. Michael then intervened and warned the two corrupt cops not to threaten each other with weapons. We've got some bad guys, detectives. Do we have to worry about that? Pull that shit out there, what do you think's gonna happen? After the feud ended, they then set fire to the stolen car to eliminate traces and rushed away from there by taking a different path. Gabe's been clean for six months. Russell then warns Gabe of the mistake he had made by taking the money and almost endangering their work mission. Russell turns out to be a former Navy SEAL, just like Michael, while Gabe used to be a good cop, but the man was fired for an unknown reason. The scene then switches and shows a police sergeant named Jeffrey Allen, who is assigned to handle a robbery case committed by Michael and his crew. The safe box stolen by them turned out to belong to a Russian billionaire named Dmitri, but Jeffrey did not know who the suspects of the robbery were and why they were after the safe box. Meanwhile, Chris, who turned out to be Jeffrey's nephew, had just arrived at the police station after hearing news about a bank robbery where according to eyewitnesses, the suspects used Spanish when communicating with each other. Marcus and Franco, who were also there, turned out to be good at Spanish. But they seemed relaxed and confident that no one would sniff out their involvement in the robbery. Chris, who has just joined the police force, will become Marcus' new partner in carrying out his duties as a police detective. But apparently, Marcus doesn't like Chris and always ignores him. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Michael then takes the stolen safe box to Irina, the mafia boss wife. We've done the job, pay the fucking money. What do you want? This 
going to be calling again. Michael seemed happy when Irina brought his son, who turned out to be Irina's nephew, because the child's mother is Irina's younger sister, Elena Vlaslov. The reason Michael wants to work for Irina and her husband is that Irina threatens to separate Michael from his son as well as Elena. Because he has successfully completed his work, Michael also asks Irina to keep his promise, which is to let him take Elena and their son with him, as well as collect the payment money. However, Irina apparently refused to return Elena and her nephew to Michael and also refused to pay the money because Michael and his crew had one more job to complete, where they had to break into the Department of Homeland Security, DHS, office and steal more data about her husband. This must be done because all the evidence in the safe deposit box will not be very useful if it is not accompanied by the information contained in the database at the DHS office. When Michael was about to leave, he accidentally met Elena, who had just had an important meeting with FBI agents who sided with Irina's husband. Elena and Michael looked awkward when they met before the woman finally gave Irina a satellite phone because her husband had called. Look in the eyes and you will see it. Mm -hmm. I was just about to discuss that with him. It wasn't the phone. Terrible thing for a sibling to say, I know. Having no other choice but to concede to Irina's wish to reunite with Elena and their son, Michael couldn't help but call his crew back to discuss the work. After that, Russell, who was about to meet Michael, was suddenly held caught and tortured by Irina's henchmen, where Irina deliberately did this to threaten Michael and other crew members. On his head. Yo, Gabe, where your brother, man? Michael and the rest of the crew had gathered somewhere, waiting for Russell to arrive. However, suddenly they were surprised by the arrival of Russell's car, which drove in an odd way. Knowing that something is wrong, Michael immediately runs there and finds Russell badly and badly injured. Michael and his crew decided to continue the work without Russell. As they figure out a way to do it, Marcus and Franco propose a triple nine scenario, which involves an officer down call that sends all the cops to the location, with Marcus nominating his new partner, Chris Allen, a Marine veteran, as the cop to kill. The next day, Chris and Marcus are assigned to work on a murder case suspected of being linked to gangsters. To find out about these cases, Chris went to a group of gangsters who were gathered around the crime scene. He tried to question them on the murder case that took place there, but the gangsters did not like his attitude and refused to cooperate with him, even insulting him. Chris almost started a fight with them before finally, Marcus came to intervene at once to warn Chris about the gangsters in the area who would do anything, even a policeman. That's Luis Pinto. He's a Mara Selva Trucha Hey, go get a cigarette. In the evening, Chris meets Jeffrey at a bar, where Jeffrey informs Chris of the development of a bank robbery that may be much bigger than they previously thought. Marcus tries to befriend Chris as they go out on duty together. During that day, Chris attempts to question a local gang member and finally gets information regarding who is the mastermind behind the murder case. Chris and Marcus then formed a team with several other police officers, where they then raided the house of a gangster suspected of being the murderer. A shootout between the police and gangs of gangsters was inevitable because apparently, the gangster was a member of a gang led by Luis Pinto. While trying to detain the gangster, Chris was shot, and the gangster managed to escape. But then Marcus caught him and got into a fight with him before Chris finally came and shot the man. On the other hand, Jeffrey, who is investigating a bank robbery case, gets a tip from a trusted informant, and knows that Gabe is one of the people involved in the bank robbery. 
Meanwhile, Michael tells Irina that he will soon do the work and asks Irina to let him talk to Elena and their son. Over the phone, Elena informs Michael that she and their son are in Tel Aviv, Israel, and Michael doesn't have enough time to meet and take them home. Gabe, who is still bemoaning the death of his brother, tries to stop the robbery that will be carried out by Michael and his crew by following Chris and Marcus around and trying to tell Chris everything. But soon, it was discovered by Marcus, who then kicked Gabe because Marcus didn't want Chris and everyone else to know about his involvement with Gabe. Chris asks Marcus about Gabe, who tells him that Gabe is his former informant. After that, Gabe tried to visit Chris at his house. However, Jeffrey's partner, Detective Trina Ling, who was tracking Gabe's whereabouts, managed to find out Gabe was around Chris' house. Jeffrey then rushed there to check on Chris, who turned out to be fine, and Gabe had escaped when he found out the police were coming there. On the day Michael and his crew are about to commit a robbery at the DHS office, Marcus takes Chris to an abandoned housing project to meet an informant with information about their murder case, which is part of their plan involving the triple nine scenario. Franco will enter the DHS office to steal the data Irina needs. As Chris and Marcus enter the building and down an alley after Hall in the darkness, Marcus sneaks away, and Luis enters, trying to find Chris. It turns out that Luis came there to kill Chris on Marcus' orders. But then, Chris accidentally bumps into Gabe, who tries to warn Chris that he will die in this place. Not long after, Luis then attacks and tries to shoot Chris, but instead hits Gabe. As Luis escapes, Chris confronts a seriously injured Gabe. Before Gabe can reveal anything, Marcus arrives there and then triggers a shootout between Gabe and Marcus. Gabe is eventually killed, and Marcus is shot in the head. Chris is worried that Marcus will die, then immediately calls Triple Nine, which is also the code for Michael and Franco to carry out their actions. Elsewhere, Jeffrey, who thought that Chris was an injured police officer, rushed to Chris's location. So we don't know if Chris is down. We not sure, Jeff. I need a unit for 211 Adam in progress. Meanwhile, Michael and Franco break into the DHS office and manage to steal the information despite having to face a bit of interference from the police. After that incident, Michael also met with Irina and her henchmen for an exchange. Michael had prepared gifts to give to his son at their reunion. Irina gave him the money according to the agreement but refused to take Michael's son as he promised earlier. After being hit by Irina's henchmen, Michael walks back to his car and sets off a bomb connected to his gift, which instantly kills Irina and her henchmen. Michael tries to find Franco to share Irina's money, but Franco kills Michael and steals all the money. On the other hand, Marcus is now in a coma after the shooting incident. Meanwhile, Chris gets information about Luis, who was shot dead by the SWAT team. After Luis' stuff is in the room, Chris finds a note in Luis' wallet which contains the location where Marcus was taking it on the day of the shooting. Chris later knows that Marcus met Luis on the day of the shooting, telling him where to kill Chris. Long story short, Chris then visits an unconscious Marcus to try to get answers, but Chris is distracted by Franco's presence there, which invites him back to the police station to get his explanation of the shooting. However, as the two head to the car, Chris receives a call from Jeffrey who tells him that Franco was involved in the robbery and also the shooting involving Marcus and Lise. As the two head to their respective cars, Jeffrey is seen in the back seat of Franco's car, and they both shoot each other as Franco sits in his car. Franco is killed, 
and Jeffrey is shot in the stomach. When Chris calls Triple Nine, trying to save his Uncle Jeffrey by pulling out a cigarette and smoking it. But Jeffrey's future fate is unknown. The moral that we can learn from this movie is the love of a father and husband is very great for his family so that anything will be done by him, even if it is a very bad and difficult job for him.